Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. It came down to just two votes. The U.S. Senate will not call new witnesses or review any additional evidence in the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump. It appears the president is headed for a swift acquittal, but that still needs to be voted on, and it's unclear when exactly that will happen. The president set to deliver the State of the Union address next week. He was impeached by the House last month on charges he abused power and obstructed Congress. The Democrats had pushed for testimony from the president's former national security advisor, John Bolton, whose upcoming book linked the president with those charges. But today's vote meant that testimony will not happen. San Antonio leaders preparing to head to the nation's capital this week and bring some tax dollars back with them. The SA to DC trip is an annual lobbying trip organized by the Chamber of Commerce, but includes representatives from the private and the public sectors. City Hall reporter Garrett Berger tells us about some of their goals. For 42 years, the Chamber has led the SA to DC trip, but this year we'll have the biggest delegation, more than 200 people business leaders, council members, representatives from SAWS and VIA, all on this trip. We all agree on the agenda ahead of time, and so it's a coordinated agenda, and then we go out and try to bring resources to the community. It's a sizable agenda, but big issues include funding for transportation, including airport infrastructure, and trying to get some F-16 squadrons relocated to Lackland. Perez says there will be meetings both big and small with elected officials and members of the administration. We start off together in the morning, and then around noon or so, we go forth and conquer. The city's director of government and public affairs describes the lobbying effort as a two-step of sorts. So you're lobbying on the one hand for the funding to get put into the programs that are important to us and then going back later and advocating for our particular application uh, competing against all these other cities for those dollars. So Perez says success takes time. For example, the federal courthouse, which was, I think, uh, over $100 million, and it's under construction right now, that was on our federal agenda for like nine years for, until we finally got it added into the appropriation and then get it funded. We need to remind them that we have worth here and we deserve resources, and that's the goal. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. A San Antonio firefighter who previously served a lengthy suspension for trying to dodge a drug test and then failing it in trouble again. Engineer Emmett Guzman was handed a 20 day suspension in early December for arriving 90 minutes late to one shift and failing to show for another. These incidents happening over a three day, three day period in June. Guzman was originally issued an indefinite suspension only to have it shortened after he acknowledged breaking San Antonio Fire Department rules. A man has died after police say his friend cut his neck with a knife. This happening today on West Harlan Avenue around 2 o'clock on the south side. Police believe an argument between the 31-year-old suspect and 44-year-old victim led up to this attack. The victim's sister told police that she was there and did not see the cutting, but saw her brother on the ground bleeding. The victim was taken to a hospital where he later died. The suspect has not been arrested. Crime Stoppers reaching out to the public to help locate an aggravated robbery suspect. Take a look at these images. The robbery took place at a stop and save on Marbach Road on January 20th. Police said the suspect walked up to the clerk, pulled out a gun and demanded money. The suspect took off and no one was injured. Contact Crime Stoppers at the number on your screen if you have any information. The cause of a house fire in Kirby today is still a mystery, and now that family is out of their home. Fire officials say that fire began in a room that had been converted to a garage. This happened around 7 a.m. on Scott Carpenter Drive. But as Katrina Weber reports, that fire affected more than that one room. Smoke pouring from this home on Scott Carpenter near Allen Shepherd Drive told Kirby firefighters what they had. What they didn't know at first was exactly where that fire was. It was hard to locate because of the converted garage. Eventually, though, they did find the fire tearing its way through that converted garage room. They had to break into the ceiling to keep the flames from spreading throughout the house. They were checking for extension into the attic, make sure that it wasn't uh, extended too far. Before they could begin to move in and fight the fire, the people who live here made sure they moved out looking for safety in the street at 7 in the morning. It seems there were 10 people in all inside this house when the fire broke out. One of them told me luckily they smelled the smoke and were able to get out safely. They got out, but it's unclear if and when they'll be able to go back in. Although firefighters contain the flames, the smoke may have spread. We're going to contact a Red Cross to have them 
make location and either find shelter or family or friends. They also called in the fire marshal to try to answer one lingering question, how the fire started. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The convicted medical center rapist Anton Harris questioned by police and released as they investigated a case in which a woman said she'd been groped on a stairwell of her medical center apartment in 2015. It was among a series of sexual assaults that had been reported in the medical center area. That was two years before he raped and robbed a nurse in her apartment in that area. On Wednesday, he was found guilty in that case. Harris also faces charges in four other rapes in the medical center area from 2016 to 2017. During the punishment phase of his trial, those victims testified against Harris, as did the woman who said that a teenager she would later identify as Harris groped her. Due to the nature of this case, we are concealing her identity. I was walking up the stairs. I felt someone grab and put their hand underneath my bottom. Several months later and in court today, she again identified Harris as the person who groped her. Harris facing life in prison for the 2017 rape of the nurse. Testimony in the punishment phase of his trial will resume on Monday. He was homeless and addicted to drugs, but made a vow to our cameras last year to turn his life around with the help of a behavioral health program. Brad Britt kept that promise. A few months ago, Britt died of a heart attack. His family had no idea how his life had changed until they came across our story. Today, Britt was honored posthumously for his accomplishments, allowing his family some closure. Devin Clark with that story and we believe that he's in a better place. Nikki Clark used to keep in contact with her brother Brad Britt through social media, but several months ago, he stopped responding. I was looking for my brother, and I found the article from KSAT. We featured Britt in a story last April. Well, uh, before I got here, I was living on the streets. I'm able to get some money saved, get off the drugs. Britt was rehabilitating here in Government Hill at the Behavioral Health Transitions Program through Crosspoint, which helps homeless men plagued by drug addiction get back on their feet. When Clark found our story, she contacted the program and learned that her brother had successfully completed it and later managed to get his own apartment. Sadly, Clark also learned that her brother had passed away from a heart attack in August. His family didn't get the chance to say goodbye, but tonight they have closure. It means the world to my family and I to know that he found a program that changed his life immensely. It gave him hope. It gave him a new start in life. Clark and her family drove 19 and a half hours from Ohio to attend a cross point luncheon moderated by KSAT 12 Steve Spreeser today. On behalf of Britt, Clark proudly received her brother's award for graduate of the year. They said that he was an inspiration to others in the program. Despite all of the challenges that Britt faced throughout his life, his family has comfort in knowing that he left this earth with pride and dignity. And the last thing he posted on Facebook is, I'm not where I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Time saver traffic right now. This is 281 at loop 410 and you can see things are moving, which is actually pretty nice to see. Pretty crowded though on 410, but the ramps at least seem like they're pretty smooth going right now. Happening tomorrow, the eastbound lanes of I-10 will be closed from Ralph Fair Road to Bernie Stage Road, while crews will work on the expanded Bernie Stage Road bridge there. That closure is expected to begin around 4 a.m. and last until 9 p.m. Drivers may want to steer clear of that area. And as we look at live cam right now, this turned out to be a pretty nice day. Mm -hmm. I, I had my doubts. Yeah, start it started today. off gray, but then that sun showed up. That's fair. Yeah, the, the clouds are pretty thick this morning, but they quickly scattered out and we saw a great day. We saw a lot of sun this afternoon. The aquifer is holding steady at 673 in the pollen count. We got some good news here too. Molds in the low category. Mountain cedar is also low. We're nearing the end of mountain cedar season. Let's hope it stays low uh, for several more days. Where we have some more sun in the forecast this weekend. Some rain chances next week. We're going to talk about it coming up in just a bit. Steve. Yes, sir. Yeah, and I was wondering how much you charged to fix that. The shop came about uh, basically from a need. I was initially going to make it a workshop and storage uh, area for myself. A lot of these clocks I collected back in the early 80s. That's when I started working on them, about when I was 26 years old. You buy old stuff, you have to repair the old stuff. So that's where I learned my trade at. 
I repair the heirloom clocks. It was either the mothers or fathers, grandfathers, grandparents, great grandparents. We, we get people coming up from Corpus Christi, um, Del Rio, Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, all over the place. I get all types of clocks in and some I've never seen before. Some of the movements are just outrageously uh, intricate. There's just a variety of different movements out there. I'm working on uh, literally over two dozen clocks right now. It's a slow process at, at times. It really is. Parts are few and far between sometimes. I have to actually go on auction sites like eBay to find parts for some of these old antique clocks. I've been here uh, going on 10 years now, coming to of this year. The reward is, is the expression on the people's faces and the thanks that I get from actually repairing a uh, clock that was in the family for, for years. Great clocks. By the way, that is the Castroville Clock and Watch Shop. It's been doing business with people all across South Texas for 10 years. Photojournalist Robert Samaron part of our Storyteller series. Those are beautiful. Well, they are eager for votes in Iowa, but some Democratic candidates are in Washington because of the impeachment trial. The latest ahead of the Iowa caucuses coming up. And next at six, if you want to have the right look for the upcoming rodeo, stay tuned. We're going to introduce you to a local vendor who has one stop shop for all things jewelry. A 17-year-old girl targeted the $2,000 wheelchair she uses to compete in the Texas Paralympics, stolen in broad daylight. Tonight on the night beat, the search for the crooks. Plus. I said the whole blessing in it is that everybody got out with your lives. A family of five displaced after a house fire. The youngest, a four-month-old baby. The miraculous escape. Tonight on the night beat at 10. Well, as we inch closer and closer to the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo's Cattle Drive, the issue of what to wear can be complicated. It is so very tricky, Steve. <laughs> Ursula Perry shows us one of the new entrepreneurs you'll find at the KSAT Corral tomorrow to help spark some ideas. I originally started making purse tassels, so leather purse tassels adds fringe and color and cute things to your to your bags. She's done a lot of things, but this is the one thing veteran Laura Gilbertson says makes her life fulfilled. She's the chestnut cowgirl whose personal style led from one thing to another thing till her kitchen table looked like this. I make uh, hat bands now. Leather, fox fur, rabbit, turquoise, silver, coral beading. It's a creative storm that will be assembled for sale at the San Antonio Rodeo Cattle Drive. Laura's parcel of precious cowboy pretties will be on display at the KSAT Corral. In particular, hat accessories, which are super on trend these days. Sold out, so I'm making some more for this weekend. This empty nester mom is hitting festivals and shows with custom made items, but also selling online at Etsy and Instagram too. This is not a quick production line. She works alone and each item takes between 45 Five minutes to an hour. Each piece is a creation. It's made by hand by me. And just one year into this business, she is catching the cowboy boho wave of fashion just right. It's a global market right now, not just a Texas thing. I've shipped all over the world. I've had orders from Japan, uh, Tel Aviv, Israel, oh gosh, Ireland. The chestnut cowgirls items on average run between $45 and $100, but some of her high-end leather goods run as high as $300. You can catch her and a number of other vendors tomorrow at the KSAT Corral from 9 to 1 at the Pavilion at the Hilton. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. And the KSAT Corral Hoedown is part of the 13th annual Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. That parade starts at 11 tomorrow morning and travels from I-35 down Houston Street to La Villita. But a cool place to catch it all is at the KSAT Corral, which will open from 9 a.m and close at 1 p.m. You can still get your tickets. You can purchase those to the corral on our, through our website. Yeah, you need the tickets to get in. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I'm second guessing what I'm wearing. You knew already what you yep. were wearing? That impresses me more. I mean, boots, yeah, and it, boots and jeans <laughs> and then some sort of shirt. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on the boots. Aside but from that, I, you know, I don't know. add some turquoise in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, see, so now I'm actually learned. thinking about it, which hey. 
is unusual. <laughs> unusual <laughs> for me. <laughs> well, here's what I can tell you. Wear something warm. Yes, okay. that's what I was curious yeah. about, weather-wise. I think we'll be in the 40s when things get kicked off 9 o'clock, but it warms up pretty quickly. So we're going to see a pretty rapid warm-up tomorrow. And we're going to see a lot of sun, too. It's going to be a gorgeous Saturday, especially by the afternoon. Today, we got up to 62. That was the high temperature, just some 50s out in the hill country. So it wasn't terribly warm, but it was nice once the sun came out. We lost those clouds pretty early. And let's take a look at January in review. We've basically been above average almost every day. There was just a handful of days there where we were below average. We averaged a temperature of about 58.1, the warmest January we've ever seen. 62 that was back in 1923 but here's the stat that kind of jumps off the page we did not see a freeze this january that's the first time that's happened since 1939 so it was a warm january for sure and as far as rainfall goes well, that was pretty generous there too we got 1.87 that is actually above average but if you consider december we're still a little bit below average we could still use some rain there's a little bit more in the forecast not a whole lot and we have a little bit out there tonight. This is some very, very light shower activity, and I doubt that much of this is reaching the ground. The air is pretty dry at the surface. A lot of this tends to evaporate before it makes it to the ground, but maybe a sprinkle or two around Rock Springs, maybe a couple of sprinkles in the hill country tonight, uh, but it, it's not going to add up to much. Uh, we see a few returns here right around Rock Springs at this hour. Uh, time lapse shows us that we did have the clouds this morning, and then by midday, sun came out, turned into a really nice Friday. 59 degrees right now. Dew point is at 35. North northwesterly winds at about 10 miles per hour and the temperatures mid 50s Rock Springs to Kerrville we're at 57 Gonzales 58 in Catula temperatures will decrease pretty rapidly tonight and uh, dew points on the low end and that's one of the reasons we'll see those big swings in temperature uh, especially tomorrow starting off chilly and then warming up pretty nicely in the afternoon you look at the big picture here there's some really dry air out in West Texas two points in the single digits that's about as dry as it gets that is some very desert air so uh, we're not seeing a lot of rain out there, but uh, again, just a few of those late returns because we do have some upper level energy over the top of us. That's over West Texas moving in our direction, but it'll move through tonight. We'll be done with it and we'll get high pressure starting to build in right now. It's sitting over California, but that moves east and that's going to allow for the pretty quiet weekend. Uh, now behind that, there will be some more activity and we'll get some more rain chances next week. Here's a look at future cast and it shows that uh, we'll get a few thin high clouds tomorrow. No big deal. That'll be the case probably Sunday morning too, but by Sunday afternoon, we will see an increase in cloud cover and we may go mostly cloudy late on Sunday. Uh, by Monday, here comes the moisture. We'll get a couple showers, I think around, especially along the coast uh, Monday afternoon. Then we look forward to next week. Looks like we'll get a pretty good front on Wednesday. Right now it's scheduled for Wednesday morning and that could bring highs in the 40s and 50s by the middle part of next week. So something to watch there. Forecast for tonight. Temperatures falling off to 48 by 11 o'clock, 41 midnight. Tomorrow we start off at 38, 70 for a high with mostly sunny skies. Northwesterly winds pretty light. That's almost perfect. And then uh, Sunday, 74, 75 Monday with a slight chance of some showers. And then the cold front Wednesday, windy conditions. Right now we're going with a high of 50 and some showers around and then some clearing on Thursday. Okay, see Steve, so some leather jacket, maybe some fringe tomorrow for the corral. It's good luck. It's good luck. It's I'm just looking out for you. It's You're assuming that I have something with fringe. Oh no, I want you to find No, you have to go looking for that. Where's my friend <laughs> Steve Brown? Yes, he had a oh, great exactly. buckskin fringe. Yeah. He did. Fantastic. He did. Brownie, I need to borrow it if you're out there. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it down. Yeah. All right, usually the Spurs are known for what they do on the court. That's right. And now a major donation off the court to help the city spruce up all of its parks including the basketball courts. When we come back to major announcement made by the Spurs organization today and it's the annual Pink in the Rink night for the San Antonio Rampage coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs have donated $1 million to help the city improve its parks. It's a four-year commitment to renovate parks and community basketball courts across the city. On hand for today's announcement is Peter John Holt, who's taken over the Spurs Sports and Entertainment Chairmanship, CEO R.C. Buford, along with Spurs star LaMarcus Aldridge and Mayor Ron Nuremberg, who participated in groundbreaking ceremony at Woodard Park. LaMarcus contributed an extra $100,000 of his own money to support the project. I think this is something that, you know, uh, is um, close to me, you know, in my situation, in my heart. So, you know, I feel like, you know, I just wanted to uh, join in and, you know, try to help. And I feel like it's a, a, a big time thing that they're doing and I'm looking forward to it. The gift, the $100,000 is a wonderful um, material expression of that, uh, that heart of giving and that heart of service, which is just, it's just fantastic. 
Now, the Spurs have one more home game tomorrow night before they head out on the annual rodeo road trip that will include stops in six cities over 23 days. Playing in eight games is arguably the toughest rodeo road trip in the 17-year history of the event, starting with both the Lakers and the Clippers in their first two games in Los Angeles beginning Monday, coming off their worst as far as results last year when they went 1-7. and seven. For the longest-tenured Spur in Patty Mills, what does a rodeo road trip mean to him? Many things. Um, on court wise, um, leading into to the All Star break and having that first part of the rodeo road trip as a good way to have momentum going into it and then coming out on, on the other side as well. Um, off court wise, there's always been a, a good chance to be able to, um, you know, I guess reconnect with everyone on, on the team um, with stuff that we do off the court on, on the road. You know, it, it'll, it'll be fun. But one more game before that happens. That's tomorrow night against Charlotte at 8 p.m. at the AT&T Center. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Super Bowl 54 is this Sunday in Miami between the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. It will feature a tale of two offenses that have the Niners run first attack versus the Kansas City Chiefs passing attack. In the incredible comeback against the Texans, the Chiefs called 31 pass plays against just six runs, scoring seven straight touchdowns for 41 unanswered points. Compare that, according to ESPN stats, to 71 runs in the last 88 plays for the 49ers, who feature the second best defense in all of the league. We're obviously facing a really good offense, so we're going to have to do some things um, to counter that, but uh, just stick to what we do. We believe in each, in each other. We believe in the scheme. We believe in what we've done all year, and, and we plan on going out there and putting a good you know, good product on tape. And you got to play good defense. You got you to contain the receivers. You got to do your job. You got you to limit the big plays, but you know, it's easier said than done for sure. All right, kickoff will be at 5.30 San Antonio time on Sunday. Tonight at the AT&T Center at San Antonio Rampage will stage their 10th annual Pink in the Rink Night. Presented by Methodist Healthcare System, the Rampage will wear custom pink jerseys tonight, which for the first time will pair a patch with the names of cancer fighters or survivors. For us to kind of, uh, you know, honor the people that we've lost and the survivors and just kind of have a game to celebrate everyone. It's uh, it's pretty special, and usually it's uh, it's a fun game to play. It hits home um, for pretty much everyone in the arena, um, one way or another. So um, you'll be able to see how many people are affected and uh, how many people battle through these types of types of situations. So um, it's a great night. It's fun for all of us. And it all starts at 7 p.m. We'll be there for that. I already have my pink in the ring tie <laughs> ready uh, to yeah. go. Yeah, <laughs> you're prepared. I am. That's great. We'll be right back. The Iowa caucus now just three days away. Voters will weigh in on their pick for the 2020 Democratic presidential nomination for the first time. Here's the latest from the campaign trail in Des Moines. The countdown is on to the first voting contest of the 2020 presidential race. Every Iowan is worth a thousand Californians. Candidates crisscrossing Iowa and launching new ads. And Elizabeth Warren is doing something great for America. Ahead of Monday's much anticipated caucuses. And it's a key test of the appeal of the candidates, their organizing strength, their financial strength, the appeal that they have. It is a true battleground, a testing ground for these candidates. A new Wall Street Journal NBC poll well. showing former Vice President Joe America. Biden and Senator Bernie Sanders neck and neck, leading the Democrats in Iowa. I think it's going to be really close. President Donald Trump criticizing both candidates during a Thursday night rally in Des Moines. Today's Democrat Party is run by left-wing extremists. Pete Buttigieg also taking aim at the front runners, as the latest poll shows him now bumped from the top four. I've seen Vice President Biden making the case that we cannot afford to take a risk on somebody new right now. I believe at a time like this, the risk we cannot afford to take is to turn to the same Washington mindset that has brought us to this point. And in these critical last days before the caucuses, the three senators running still in Washington for the impeachment trial, trying to make their appeal to Iowans from afar. I'm here. I'm hoping that the people see it as a plus and I'm going to do my job. Meantime, the field of candidates has narrowed once again with John Delaney dropping out of the race. Charges are pending for three teenagers that brought a BB gun to a high school in El Paso, sparking a lockdown there. A district spokesperson says the reports came in Thursday morning of three armed suspects walking around the school. In response, law enforcement and helicopter vehicles, they surrounded the building. Once that lockdown was lifted, school officials allowed students to be picked up right away. No one was hurt.
A Houston man facing charges after allegedly killing a 23 year old woman in a crash. 26 year old Zachary Castro charged with two counts of intoxication assault and one count of intoxication manslaughter. On Monday, the victim stopped with other people to help a car stuck in a ditch when Castro's car allegedly plowed right into the group. The victim was declared brain dead on Tuesday. Today, the CDC has taken an unprecedented step to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, ordering a quarantine of close to 200 Americans evacuated from China. This is the first time that has happened in more than 50 years. Those evacuees now required to stay at a California military base for two weeks. They're being tested for any infection. Across the U.S., there are now six confirmed cases of the coronavirus, including the first person-to-person -person transmission between a husband and a wife in Illinois. The World Health Organization has declared the illness a global health emergency. The two women in custody, along with an officer involved shooting, being investigated in Mar-a-Lago today. Florida troopers pursuing a black SUV when it breached two security points on the property. Officers fired shots at the SUV. That did not stop the driver. The vehicle later located. The president wasn't there, but is scheduled to arrive later in the day. Tennessee investigators are looking for a man who held a gun to someone's head outside his home. The incident captured by a doorbell camera. There's a lot happening in this roughly 15 second incident in Nashville, Tennessee, but notice the quake in the victim's voice. He sounded, you know, scared at the moment. And I think that's what upsets me. She's choosing not to reveal her identity out of safety. She was on the other side of the door when this armed man in a hoodie rushed up to her brother-in-law as he was trying to get inside. The doorbell camera capturing him giving the cash in his pocket before the gunman darted off. He started banging and I opened up the door and he was like, close the door, lock it really quick. And he, he slammed it and locked the door. I'm like, what's happening? He was like, somebody just put a gun to my head and asked for money. When we do have issues, it's never our own neighbors. It's neighbors from outside. Letitia Granberry lives across the street and now worries about the safety of her own family. Almost he acted nervous to me. The way he was holding the gun um, seemed like he was like that may have been one of his first few times. It's very upsetting that something like this would happen here. She's just glad her four young children who were with her at the time weren't involved. While she says her relative is doing better a day later, this incident only putting their caution on high alert. We don't bother anybody around here. We don't we don't mess with people. We keep to ourselves. To international news now, Britain gone from the European Union after 47 years of membership. It became official today at 11 p.m. local time. In a recorded message, Prime Minister Boris Johnson called Britain's departure, quote, a moment of real national renewal and change, end quote. But many British residents mourned the loss of their EU identity, and there was sadness in Brussels as well, where British flags were quietly removed from many of the buildings. Back here at home, middle and high school students from all over San Antonio are coming together to take part in a citywide challenge. The SA Smart City Challenge was created by the mayor. It's all about making the city better connected to technology. Teams from various schools and grade levels will be provided with a mentor from the community and receive training and presentation and research skills. Students will focus on improving digital access for all of San Antonio. The teams this year will think about digital inclusion, how to make internet access available to citizens all over San Antonio and to help educate them about the kinds of resources that are available for commerce, for education, for entertainment. The project is inspired by the SA Tomorrow Comprehensive Plan and supported by San Antonio Museum of Science and Technology. It's still to come why a company is asking people to help them hang out with pigs. Meantime, an iconic company rolling out a new drink line to get you going, Coke Energy. Two of the energy drinks are made with real coffee. Coke Energy contains more than 100 milligrams of caffeine per 12 ounce serving. The company hasn't advertised these new drinks yet. They are planning to promote the products during, of course, the Super Bowl. Part of the show where we talk about the KSAT News at 9, the 9 beat, the online at 9, whatever you want to call it. We prefer 
KSAT News at 9. But we're going to talk about voter registration because the last day to register to vote is March 3rd. No. Monday is Monday March 3rd is when the primary that's is. right for the March 3rd primary. There are a lot of dates to keep track of. So our Tiffany Huertas is taking a look at those dates, making sure that you have your calendar lined out, but also talking about an important role that Texas could play in this primary. And again, Election Day coming up on March 3rd because it's Super Tuesday. And if you've noticed, there have been a lot of more a lot more presidential candidate advertisements oh, yeah. locally. They're paying more attention to Texas because on Super Tuesday, which is the March 3rd primary, Texas, California, Arizona, the big prizes. Mm -hmm. Now, as we mentioned, a lot to keep track of in 2020 when it comes to elections. So we have a KSAP News at 9 Vote 2020 newsletter that rolls out every single week and it's all about helping you keep track of the latest information, helping you understand some of the background, the key aspects of a lot of important races. You can sign up for that by going to ksat.com slash newsletters and Steve and I contribute. Yeah, to that we add our week. two cents. By the way, I compared the Iowa caucus to a political potluck casseroles in the, in the latest specifically newsletter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it a got, caucus casserole. It Will it fall flat? <laughs> Stay tuned. All right. We also want to talk about what we do every single Friday an Associated Press fact check. This is all about the coronavirus tonight. Every single week, the AP issues uh, uh, some true and false checks, essentially fact checks about some of the big stories that have been making headlines. So we're going to talk about the coronavirus in terms of what is accurate and some of the things you may have seen out there that might be misleading or all out false. So we're going to get it all straight for you tonight at nine. Set the record straight at nine. All right. Meantime, a lot of things happening this weekend. Super Bowl and Groundhog Day all in one on Sunday, Justin. In one day, it's a huge day. Wow. Huge day in my world. Uh, we're going to find out what the Groundhog says. We're going to find out if the 49ers or Chiefs are Super Bowl champions. It'll be a big day Sunday, but we got good weather for it. We really do. Uh, temperatures right now sitting at 59 degrees, 57 in Hondo, 52 Rock Springs. So we're starting to cool off some. It'll be a pretty rapid cool down tonight. In fact, by tomorrow morning, we could be in the upper 30s. It'll be jacked weather to start your Saturday, but you won't need it in the afternoon. We're going to talk more about this weekend forecast and some rain chances down the line. That's coming up in just a few minutes. In the buzz today, want to pal around with a pig? A South Carolina animal sanctuary is looking for volunteers to help socialize roughly 100 rescued pigs that are preparing for life as adopted pets. No swining and dining is necessary, uh. and they're not looking for hogs and kisses here. Just some nice belly rubs and quality time to get the pigs used to domesticated life. Yeah, so if you're ready and swilling, better act fast because people are already hogging the time slots. Sorry, those puns make me. Oh, they're scared. not up to they're not up to your puns. Yeah, I'm just like, you know, whatever. All right, get your <laughs> thumbs ready. New emojis are on their way. 117 new emojis approved by the Unicode Consortium will be rolled out later this year. The big theme appears to be gender inclusivity. We'll be getting the transgender flag, a gender neutral Santa and a man wearing a wedding veil. Another entry sure to be popular. It's called the Italian hand gesture. Now, mm -hmm. this is our producer thinks this expresses confusion, disbelief, or rejection. I do not think so. What do you think? I think it's like an approval, like, ooh, that's good. You know, that's... It's, it's emphasizing whatever it is. That's what I, yeah. Ninjas, mammoths, bubble tea, a human heart, and a smiley face shedding a single tear also made the cut. That's a good pizza pie. <laughs> No? I can't wait to see the text you send with that. <laughs> a company is rolling out a new product to help those who are trying to give up meat. Now, fair warning, this is unorthodox. It is a meat patch, kind of like a nicotine wow. style patch. Okay. Strong Roots is the creator of the product. They say they're supposed to be worn on the arm like you see in the video here. The patches contain a bacon scent which is released by scratching the patch. A professor at Oxford University says studies have shown that the scent can reduce food cravings. So huh. just the aroma of bacon can reportedly leave you satisfied. That has never been my experience. Yeah, I would disagree with that. Yeah, makes you want bacon. <laughs> All right, on the final day of January, you can warm up a little with some sweetness. Today is National Hot Chocolate Day. 
ground chocolate, warm milk, sugar, mini marshmallows, whipped cream. But what you might not realize is the yummy drink has some health benefits. Cocoa can help prevent cancer and aid in digestion. Perhaps that is why it's been a popular drink since the Mayans created it 2000 years ago. So you could skip the Friday cocktails and opt for a warm cup of cocoa. By the way, when I was doing this gesture and questioning what it really means, our producer Alexis was calling me a hater. Oh, this is from the same woman that wrote ready and swilling. <laughs> Those are some fantastic puns. I, I still think <laughs> this is like you're getting mad, right? Yeah, OK, I can or see mad. You, yeah, but I don't or see confusion. Like we might be overanalyzing this. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. we may be. We may be. Well, if you're going to send it out an emoji, you want it to mean something. It's true. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. We're going to have to. I mean, I think it's good. I think it's like a seal of appro approval, like a thumbs up. Could be. Okay. And that's the way I'm going to use it. So if you get one of these to me from me, <laughs> it's a good thing. No. Yeah. Yeah. And now our producer's like weather. It's weather. Yeah. Time. I know. Uh, She's yeah. Cutting us off. You guys remember Nintendo back in the day, right? Tecmo yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah. It was awesome. Okay, you uh, lost me on this. that one, sorry. Yeah, this, you know Tecmo Super Bowl? It was great. Super Bowl's this weekend, so we have this graphic here. It's kind of like Tecmo Super Bowl. <laughs> nice. You got to blow on it to make sure it works? I like it. Uh, yes. Ah. Yeah, uh, forecast for the Super Bowl here in San Antonio, if you have plans to grill out and whatnot. Uh, mostly cloudy. Temperatures will be in the 70s. Looks pretty good for the game. Very nice. Uh, meantime, we had uh, some pretty cool cloud cover today. Some thin high clouds working across the sky. And uh, this was taken out in Atascosa. Beautiful shot. A lot of these clouds began to thin out, and we saw sun this afternoon. And now we're looking at mostly clear skies here in San Antonio. 59 degrees, two points at 35. North northwesterly winds at about 10 miles per hour. And uh, we don't have a wind chill yet, but we may get into wind chill territory as we get later into tonight. Something to keep in mind. Probably jack and weather if you're going to be out and about. 51 degrees, comfort. 56 Canyon Lake, 57 New Braunfels, 59 right now, Floresville, 54 in Divine. And we have picked up on a few light returns out to the west. We've been following this and every radar run here that these get more and more scattered out and lighter. So we're not going to worry too much about this. Maybe a sprinkle if that because the air is pretty dry at the surface. So a lot of that's not even reaching the ground, but it's associated with some upper level energy here that's swinging through. So we may see a few clouds overnight, but by tomorrow we're right back into the sun. And uh, we'll see mostly sunny skies, I think, on your Saturday. As we zoom out here and look at the big picture, most of the west is pretty quiet underneath the ridge of high pressure. The active weather is along the east coast. There's some snow up there in the Great Lakes, some lake effect snow going on. Temperatures are cold enough up there for that. But it's really not terribly cold across the country. We've got 30s and 40s. Late January, early February, you would actually expect colder numbers. We look up into Canada, and yes, there are some negative numbers, but even these aren't all that cold. What grabs my attention is what's going on out there, out there in Alaska. Some pretty cold numbers. And there's a cold chunk of air that is going to try to work down through Canada and eventually into the United States, I think, by next week. And we may fill a little bit of that cold front schedule for Wednesday. I'll show you that in the seven-day forecast in just a second. But the future cast shows we'll get uh, just some thin high clouds tomorrow. No big deal. On Sunday, mostly sunny to start. But by the afternoon, clouds thicken up. We'll probably be looking at mostly cloudy skies by uh, Sunday evening. Still no rain. That probably holds off until Monday. And even then, it's a slight chance. Only a 20% shot. I think the best chance of rain is going to be a little bit closer to the coast. Uh, so the forecast for tonight, again, drops off pretty quickly. We'll be at uh, 41 by midnight. And then uh, tomorrow, we'll start off at 38. So it's chilly tomorrow morning. 55, 10 o'clock, 63 noontime, and then up to 74 high. That is a gorgeous Saturday. Winds will be light, too. On Sunday, we're up to 74. Groundhog Day and Super Bowl. 75 Monday, 20% chance of rain. And look at Tuesday, 80. Don't be surprised if we even go warmer than that. But then cold front, that cold front I was talking about, slides through and it cools us down quite a bit. A cooler, 30% chance of rain, maybe only in the 50s Wednesday. So that forecast up until Wednesday? <laughs> you used it right. I think Thank that's you. right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. In case you missed it, it's coming up next.
It is Friday, January 31st. It was a surprise that it was happening in our neighborhood. Bear County Sheriff's Office arrested a man this morning who is accused of walking around a north side neighborhood naked. 34 year old Gilbert Ramos is charged with indecent exposure again, the Sheriff's Office says. Online jail records show this is not the first time he has exposed himself. Past charges in Bear County include criminal mischief, assault, and indecent exposure. It is a bit uh, comforting that they are, they did pick, they did, I guess, catch the individual, um, but it, you never want to let your guard down. A woman is in the hospital after a wrong way driver crashed into, into her on the northwest side. They say it happened just before one this morning. This was on Loop 1604 overpass above Babcock Road. They say a driver in a pickup truck crashed head on into the woman driving a sedan. She was pinned inside of her car. First responders had to pull her out. She was taken to the hospital and the pickup driver was arrested. 64 U.S. military personnel have now been diagnosed with traumatic brain injuries after the Iranian missile attack in Iraq earlier this month. That's 14 more than the Pentagon released earlier this week. A growing number of injuries indicates the attack was a little more serious than first reported. Dunkin' Donuts gearing up for Valentine's Day. The chain has a limited time menu of festive food and drinks. It includes a pink velvet macchiato. Combines Dunkin' Donuts espresso with red velvet cake flavor and a hint of cream cheese icing. Dunkin' also offering two of its longtime favorites. One is the brownie batter donut. The other is Cupid's Choice Donut. Have to check them out.